All righty, Kurt, you back on also? Yep, here I am. Awesome. So um, one of the things I mentioned was on Monday, we, we decided we're going to go ahead and do a little role-playing on call. Kurt is going to be our first seller, and um, maybe our second and third. We'll see how that goes, and I hope he's not too hard on me. Um, but w the idea is to give you an example of some of what our practical training is going to be from the classes. Um, in, in a nutshell, the entire Yellow Letter campaign is to help you get going. Um, excitingly enough, Kurt is going to provide 250 free leads for vacant houses in the zip code of your choice as a, a student of the class. We will talk about how to do deals. We will look at the paperwork of doing deals. Uh, one of the most fearful things for people in general is, is talking to strangers. And so being prepared and knowing what to do when the seller calls you is, is more than half the battle. And then having a creative um, mindset to know that there's more than one way to buy houses. And the more investors you talk to, the more you put out there, uh, you'll see more creative ways to, to acquire properties in, in, instead of just a traditional that you may have learned along the way. Kurt, what, what words of wisdom do you have for the moment um, about the whole campaign, the class, before we go into some role playing? Well, uh Running a real estate business is 80% mindset, 20% hard work. And um, what we want to do is to help seed you, the students with, this is a full-time job, that um, writing um, uh, yellow letters or paying for a, a mailing shop to uh, uh, do your direct mail, but uh, initially we're all going to be doing handwritten yellow letters is your um, full-time or part-time job from here on out for the rest of your life. So this isn't uh, a hobby. We want to be training you on that this mind, th that you need a mindset that you're going to write 100 letters at least a week. It's easy actually to do 200 a week, handwritten. If you've got uh, kids, you're going to list your kids. Um, and uh, if you do 200 a week, that's a four, that's 800 a month. You'll be getting at least uh, 100 calls um, uh, over the course of a month, and you will have a lot of experience uh, talking to sellers, uh, and we will help you through it. So the mindset is the big is the most important thing that we want to be training you. Talking to sellers. Deal types um, are all important, <clears throat> but uh, that this is going to be uh, your next um, uh, career, uh, real estate. One of the things I'd like to share with you guys is that my background, every partner, every company, every business I've ever been part of since I can remember, I have I drive revenue. That's what I do best. I'm not the best person for the presentation of the company. I don't put the best um, materials together. I'm very content rich, and my background is sales, marketing, and advertising. And so I automatically go into mode. I, I've been trained in it. I spent my first five years when I was in my early 20s getting trained by Encyclopedia Britannica. And little did I know then what the difference it was going to make in my life. And so Everything I've gone to, and now it's been real estate, I feel like I've never done anything except real estate. Um, that training has been just uh, just phenomenal. And I started with, as some people said to me on Monday when they came up and talked to me, is that I don't like talking to strangers, and I don't either. I still don't like it. Yet I stuck it to it, and I've been trained with my fears. And what I'd like you guys to understand is that you may watch me, and, and, and it's funny because I see myself and I blink. And when, once I blink, I'm going into that, into that script automatically that, that, that's um, memorized in my brain over the years. And I will show you, um, when you're in our classes, I will show you the tools. Once we put a, a campaign out there, I have a, I have a spreadsheet, you know, whether it's electronic or on paper. I keep a, a binder myself because 
if I'm in my car, I have a clipboard with my script. I have a clipboard, a clipboard with my property information sheet. I have my phone so that I'm always um, prepared when the phone rings if the, phone, if the calls are coming into my own phone. So part of what I want to do tonight is explain to you that I have in front of me, I have my property information sheet because I sent out my 250 letters and I'm waiting for my phone to ring. And so, of course, it's going to ring when you least expect it. So be prepared when you least expect it to be able to take that call. Um, and, 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 and we have scripts, and we'll share our scripts with you, and we'll share our forms with you. And, and no matter what you go on to do, if you're going to be in real estate or if you're going to sell or buy something else, the negotiating techniques and, 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 and just what you learn how to deal with the public, is it's invaluable. Um, Kurt, why don't we go ahead and I wish I had a, a, a phone that I could make ring and why don't we go ahead and you're calling me. Um, I, I sent you out a yellow letter. Before we do that, can you tell um, the group on the phone what was the letter that, that I sent to you? All right, so I received a, uh, a handwritten letter that says, um, hi, Kurt, uh, I'm uh, writing you about your uh, home on 123 Main Street. Uh, I buy houses. Uh, yours, Darlene, P.S., call me at a uh, phone number. And that's a handwritten uh, yellow letter that we're going to uh, have everyone write. Great. So so here we go. ding a ling a ling ding a ling a ling Hello. Uh, go yeah, ahead, Darlene, call. answer it. Hello. Hey, um, I'm calling you. Uh, I got one of your postcards, uh, and uh, uh, I'm interested in selling a house. Oh, great. Thank you so much. May I get your name, please? Oh, it's Kurt. You know, Kurt Smith. Okay. Kurt, can you spell that for me? Oh, yeah. It, it, it's C-U-R-T, and it's S-M-I-T-H. So. Okay. And, Kurt, may I have your cell phone number in case we get disconnected? Oh, sure, sure. Yep. It's um, 678-365-6508. You can, you can call me. That was, if, uh, okay. And that was 678-365-6508? Yep. That's it. Thank you so much. Um, Kurt, you said um, that you're selling your house. What do you think it will appraise for? Oh, well... Yeah, I just looked on estimates, and it said uh, 150,000. So 150,000 on Zestimate? Okay, great. Um, have you listed your house with an agent? No, I just got your postcard. Uh, I have this uh, uh, rental that uh, I have just been too lazy to uh, rent, and uh, uh, got your postcard. And I've been sitting on it for six months, thinking about whether I should sell. Oh, here I am calling you. Oh, that is great. You know, um, I, I, I think uh, things happen for a reason at the time they're supposed to happen, Kurt. I'm so glad you called me. Would you sell your house for what you owe on it, Kurt? Um, well, uh, I said estimate said 150. And, uh, I'm sorry? The truth, um, I owe about 165 on it. I bought it in uh, 2006. So um, I, I had a little hard time. So you bought it in 2006? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you say you owe how much on it? Uh, about 165000 You owe about 165 okay. And can you tell me the address, please? Yeah, it's uh, 123 Main Street in uh, Lilburn, Georgia. What's that zip code? Uh, uh, 30047. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. And you said, and you got one of my postcards. That's awesome. Um, Kurt, tell me about the house. How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? Yeah. It's um, three bed, two bath, uh, about 1,500 square feet. Um, I bought it um, as a rental because everyone in 2006 was saying buy rentals. And uh, uh, it's okay. It, Carpet's a little, a little rough. Um, paint has, um, you know, a little uh, fingerprints on it and so on. 
Okay. It's okay. You know, it's not a bad house. Now, you bought it as a rental. Do you still have tenants in the house? No, it's been vacant. Uh, I've just gotten lazy. Uh -huh. How long has it been vacant? Uh, two years. Wow, I'm sorry for you. I know that's a headache. That's a lot of headache when that happens. Um, yeah. so do you, I'm, I'm paying I'm, about the 600 a month in rent, I mean in, um, in mortgage too. Does that include your taxes and your insurance or just the principal and interest? No, it's the total thing, total 600. How many years do you have left on the loan? Well, 25. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And um, Kurt, does the house have a basement? No, no. It's a, it's a, just a slab house in one of those slab neighborhoods. It's an okay rental. Okay. Yeah. Are you are you on the title to the house? Uh, yes, just me. Oh, you. Okay. And um, are you in a sub? Is the house in a subdivision? Uh, yeah, it, it's in you know, a subdivision where they're all built at the same time. Uh, slab, uh, yeah, you know, half rentals. You know, it's okay. It's an okay place uh, uh, for either an owner or a rental. Yep. How much are you asking for the house, Kurt? Well, uh, you know, I've got this problem. Uh, estimate says uh, 150. Um, yet my balance due on the mortgage is 165. Uh, and uh, uh, well, you would know better than I how much rehab it needs. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess the good huh? thing is the mortgage is only 600 a month. What 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 year was the house built? Um, about 2004, 2003 or so. Well, to your knowledge, has there been anything done to the house in the last 11 years? Uh, not uh, not uh, upgrade-wise. Um, uh, I think we might have painted a bedroom, but uh, so it's, you know, it needs some uh, certainly uh, um, maintenance. So, right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and, and I don't remember. So uh, obviously, as, you, as you're saying, it's kind of upside down. So to say you would sell it for what you owe on it would probably be welcome. <laughs> yeah, what well, would you... yeah, right. That'd be true. That'd be true. If I could get the more than what it's worth for it, uh, I would be happy, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I, I know that you owe more than it's worth at the moment. What's the least you would pay if, if we could pay cash? Uh, you know, um, uh, I'm reluctant to bring cash to the table, if you're referring. Uh, so, uh, uh, you say you say you would not bring cash to the table, right? So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't bring fifteen thousand to uh, um, make the difference right. up between what I owe and what it's worth. Um, yeah. You know, uh, things are going up, so maybe I should just sit on it, you know, so I don't really know. Um, you know I'm just calling you on your card, seeing what, I, seeing what uh, you can do. Well, again, that's great, and I can see why you didn't list it. Obviously, it wouldn't work listing it with an agent either. But, you know, you called on the card because it is it is a headache or an albatross you'd like to get away from, I can see. Um, you know, when you had it rented, what was the rental amount that, that someone was paying for it? Well, at the time, uh, I was getting 750, but you know, things have really gone up. If I uh, just uh, actually I, I did something about it, I could probably get a thousand for it easy. Um, but you know, I have to paint and this and that, and I'm getting old, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm, I don't know why, I'm just lazy about it. Uh, but I easy yeah. a thousand, easily. Okay. Okay. And, and are you looking to, to sell it as quick as possible? You know, if that was possible, I, I would I would definitely get rid of it to, tomorrow if it was possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, it is difficult for me. As, as you know, I'm sure from the card that 
I am an investor, and, and we look to, to do good business deals. And, of course, we want to make a situation that's win-win for you as well as for us. And normally we wouldn't take a house that had more owed on it than it was worth. But there are situations sometimes, you know, you are in a nice area over there on Main Street in Lilburn. We do have rentals over there, and we are looking for some other rentals over there. I would think because it's been vacant so long, I am going to have to put some money into it um, just to bring it back to occupancy standards, if you will, and, and just get it ready to have it in nice market condition for the next tenant. So we would probably you know, put quite a bit of money into it. I would love to go buy the house and see it. Uh, one last question I do have before I move on, and, and, and that would be that if, if I could help you through this process, take it off your hands, and, and just say, you know, take over the amount of payments that you have on it. Is this something you'd be w willing to meet with me and talk about? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to go meet you at the house and uh, uh, meet you personally uh, and hear what you uh, might be able to do for me face-to-face, uh, -face. yeah. That sounds great. Kurt, can I have directions on the Buckhead area? So I'd actually be coming up 85 North. Uh, what was that Wait. again? Um, I'm coming up 85 North. Uh, well, you'd uh, get off on Jimmy Carter, go down uh, a ways, and uh, turn left on Singleton and up in the Milton, uh, uh, Lowborn, and Main Street is, is uh, just a couple miles up Lowborn. Uh, Great. Middleton. So, um, are you? I know it's 7:30 already. Um, I could meet over there tonight around 8:30 or tomorrow sometime. Which would be better for you? Oh, my favorite TV show is on. I'm definitely not up for tonight, but uh, tomorrow. Uh, so what time did you say tomorrow? Well, I actually have a morning at 10 a.m. I could be there, or I could be there somewhere between 3 and 7 in the evening. Uh, well, let's do it early. Uh, let's take your 10 o'clock slot, sure. I think that helps us miss the traffic, too. One other question, Kurt. Is there anyone else? in your life that helps you make these types of decisions? Um, well, I, I have uh, my wife and, and her sister. Uh, they'd have to uh, be part of it. Well, that's, that's I'm great. I'm only one of the title, but they would have to, uh, they'd have to agree. Okay. Well, fantastic. Um, when we get together, Kurt, the way this works, after we hang up, I'm actually – I'm going to go ahead and get on my computer and just do a little bit more research. And if the numbers look good and I think I can make them work, I would, um, when we get together, we'll talk a little bit more about the whole process. Even though you're about 15000 or more over market price, I think I have an idea that we could work with. If I like what I see and I'm ready to buy it, can you bring them with you? Would you guys be prepared to do the paperwork tomorrow morning if you like the terms? Uh. Well, um, my wife is busy. She has a day job. Uh, we'd have to um, uh, take your proposal and then uh, maybe uh, have a call in the evening and uh, go over it while uh, – so I could meet you, but uh, uh, my wife and her sister would have to uh, okay. be in the evening. I understand. Um, I, you know, I will do everything I can to help you, Kurt. Um, but I am looking at lots and lots of houses. I only have a limited amount of money to be able to buy, and so I try to I try to cut back on my travel time in Atlanta. I mean, I, I would be more than happy to set it up at a time that works best for her. Of course, the contract, once we get together and put the paperwork together, if it is something that you like and you want to get out from underneath of this, I would love to be the one helping you. If I can help, I will. If I can't, I would let you know that also. But the only thing I do ask is that, um, you know, that we try to make this at least get together, go out to the property together, um, put some paperwork in place. You can take it to your attorney after we're going our own way. If, if that works out for us, is that fair enough? You know, it's very fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't ask for more. All right. So fantastic. And we've got um, a time that's better for your wife. Can we do it tomorrow evening? Yeah, yeah. I, she gets home at six, so um, you know, I'll call at uh, seven, seven thirty. Would be fine. All right, let's shoot for seven thirty. 
Um, you've got my phone number and I've got yours. Um, typically what I do, Kurt, is I'll get there probably 10, 15 minutes early. And if, and if, if you're not there, if I don't hear from you, I'll try to reach you. Um, I stay for about 15 minutes past the appointment if I don't hear from you. And then I have to go because I don't know if you're coming or not. And, 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 and if I'm early or late, I'll give you a holler so that I, you don't have to wait around as well. Um, another thing I didn't ask you for, may I get an email address? Oh, sure, sure. Yep, it's um, chsmith at speakeasy.net. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to meeting you then. I'll see you tomorrow at 10. Have a good evening. Thank you. I know. Well, this this was so real, I almost hung up the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, the, you had Darlene, you're fantastic. <laughs> your script, I, I, could, I could read how you <laughs> had structured yourself over the years. That was excellent. <laughs> And um, my little pain in the butt miss uh, with uh, underwater houses is actually a, a common and a, a can't get there from here with sellers uh, is also common. So, uh, Darlene, and you did funny. an excellent job with a tough situation. <laughs> Thank you. And it's funny because um, even though you're upside down, I am so excited because, as you said, this would be potentially – a three hundred to four hundred dollar a month possible cash flow, and this seller knows he's upside down. And this seller has had a property vacant for two months, uh, two years. So whether he wants to play hardball or not, m my biggest hurdle is overcoming the fact that I'm going to show you a non-traditional way to help me to acquire your house, and and that's probably the biggest hurdle. I can hear from our conversation that you are a very educated seller. You're not somebody that doesn't know things out there. And so the more educated people are, the harder it is sometimes to do something not traditional. And that's, of course, my, my first goal is going to be to try to do a subject to deal. And, and again, in our classes, that's what I love about our classes is that wherever the conversation goes, that helps us decide what, what options do we have. And so, as I said, when we hang up, I'm going to go to the computer, and I ask myself the same question ten times. What other way could I buy this house? What other way could I do this without getting a new loan? Because I'm not going to get a loan for a $165,000 house that's worth, according to the estimate, 150, which a lot of us know that it's probably worth even less than that, less than the estimate. So if I couldn't get it subject to... Kurt, what are some of the other options you would use to pick up a house like this? Uh, well, the uh, lease option is uh, a poor one with, because it's so far underwater. Uh, what I would do with this one was buy it subject to with the agreement that the seller doesn't care if uh, the investor keeps it on his existing mortgage for five years or longer. Older sellers who are moving on, maybe into a nursing home, they just don't care whether the uh, 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 mortgage on, uh, on the property uh, never gets cashed out because they just don't care. They're moving into a nursing home or they're moving in with relatives. So that's a viable uh, uh, possibility. If it's closer to break even, then a lease option and um, the uh, seller is is uh, trustworthy. Uh, sometimes sellers are in divorce, uh, they're having uh, cash flow problems, and you just can't trust them. So uh, a lease option is a bad uh, deal type for the seller who's uh, going through a lot of struggle and not trustworthy because uh, you're going to be mail them, mailing them the uh, a mortgage payment. And if you can't trust them to pay the mortgage, you're better off taking it subject to uh, and if they won't agree to that, uh, well, then uh, you move on. So one of the things we learn uh, is the concept of abundance. There are an infinite number of sellers out there. You can't obsess over one uh, seller, one deal. You, you do exactly what Darlene did. She was masterful at saying, 
I have limited time. If you don't work within my time frame, I move on. And that's um, uh, a sales technique. Uh, I don't know a term for it, but it's mirroring. If the seller does not work or reflect or respect the investor, you, uh, your time and your need for a profitable deal, you move on. So um, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of sellers who just aren't deals. And you go like Darlene through the whole process, and if they don't work with you, if they don't mirror your, uh, uh, your script that they, you say, I have to have a win-win, and if they don't come back with, okay, I understand win-win, let's work on this. If they don't come towards you, you know they aren't ready. And you know, just politely end the, end the conversation and you start calling them every, every 30 days on a drip. Mm -hmm. um, let's open up for questions for the moment. And the and, uh, question is, if, if, what do you guys think of that call? Was it helpful? Is it something we should do? And uh, I'm sorry, I should have announced. So if you've got noise in the background, if you're in a vehicle, um, mute your call unless you're going to speak. But announce your name and then go ahead and, and make a comment or question. This is Ron. Can you hear me? Yes, Ron. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm traveling. Um, I was... Uh, Wondering if, if one of the options, the lease option, uh, if you could arrange it, if you didn't feel the seller was trustworthy, could you arrange that the lease payment went directly to the mortgage company? Would that be uh, something that you could try it or would consider? Um, say it again, arrange the payment. To go directly to the mortgage company. Absolutely, and and that's one of my, my pieces in this business is I don't care who I am in the deal. I want to have some kind of control over the money because no matter who the other party is, there's always a chance that they can make the deal go sour, whether they declare a bankruptcy or they don't make a mortgage payment or, you know, whatever it might happen. So it's always good to have on your team um, I like worst case scenario is have an attorney as a middle person. And, you know, if I take a savvy person and I say, look, I'd like to go ahead and make the payment directly, um, here's how, offer the solution to your to the other party. The solution is, look, if we can have access to, and, and I, by the way, let me let me jump into a different direction first. One of the things you will learn, you're going to learn a lot of, one more together, and one of the most important negotiating techniques you have to learn is how to gain trust from the other person. So the first thing you have to do is gain trust and have an agreement. That agreement is a, a handshake or a hug or, uh, you know, a touch on the arm. It's not a contract, a, a threatening, scary contract that you put on the table. It's an agreement that you guys have. We have a gentleman's agreement that says, you want to sell it, and I want to buy it, and we're making an agreement. After you get to that point, then somewhere, in, I call it multiple part negotiations. So the main, main, main thing is we agreed on buying and selling that house. The minor agreements are what come later. And you have to time those very well because, again, you don't want somebody to feel like you're just a, you know, a snake charmer and in doing that, one of the things that I say, people like to be like other people. And I tell them that I have um, Steve Harlan is one of the closing attorneys that I love to work with here in Atlanta. His office is very close to your house. And he, um, he does a lot of these kind of transactions for me. And what he does is he takes care of the payments. What I'd like to do is have us, and, and, and that would work for both of us, we would have um, I'll make the payment through him and you'll do the same. That's one option we have, Mr. Seller. The other option is um, 
this is what I do with some of my other clients. They say, Darlene, I trust you 100%. You just go ahead and make the payment directly to the lender. And, and I tell them, here's what we can do. I will have access to your online account, as you will too, your online um, lender's account. You can see everything that's going on, and I can see everything that's going on. I will make the payment directly online, and that's how I do all of my mortgage payments, my lease payments and such. Is that okay for you? So that's part of the process is learning how to do that well enough after you've gotten that trust and that agreement. Great. Thank you. I'll mute my phone so I don't disturb the rest of the group, and I'll listen. Do we have any other um, comments or questions? Awesome. Um, uh, I, you know, something that I like to do when I'm in class is I like to um, go over the scripts together. There are reasons for every word in my script. I'll be quite honest with you guys. I could care less about the details of the house. Kurt, let's go ahead and mute, mute the phone out again. Um, I really don't care. All I'm doing is trying to gain trust. I'm trying to get that person to open up. Every question I ask them about the house um, is to find out if this person is open, if this person is willing to talk. If they give me one-word answers, I have a long way to go. And so that means he's threatened or she's threatened by me, and I have to get past that. And so if you get nothing else <laughs> out of our time together and you get these scripts and you understand how to talk to people, I don't know if you guys, anybody that knows me close enough, this is not the speed in which I normally talk. But when I'm in a pitch situation and I'm trying to win friends and influence people in a sales environment like buying a house, I'm going to slow it down so much that I sound stupid. And, and, and I say that I, if you listen to me, I trip over myself. I don't sound polished. You know, I'm just, I'm just another person. I'm non-threatening. And I purposely don't want to be threatening when I'm talking to that person. You know, I, and, and it's interesting because I... I surround my important questions with fluff, with with we call it, it's called petting the dog. Um, so, for example, I may ask them, um, you know, tell me about your house. How many beds? How many baths? Uh, and how much is your mortgage payment? You know, most people, if I just come out and ask them that, they're not going to want to tell me that. But if I surround it with other non-threatening questions, now they have to work to get out of telling me that. Some people won't tell me. Um, so, so, so that's, it's, it's very, very systematic in, in, in how I bury things in, in the conversation. Uh, one of the things in conversations is he control. It's a technique you have to learn. Sometimes, and I used to do this when I speak, sometimes when you get nervous, you're just going to keep going on and on and on and tell and tell and tell and tell. And inside you, you know you want to stop, but you don't know how to stop. So you have to, as a real estate investor, to get very successful at this business, you have to take, um, just take a sheet of paper and write down 100 questions. And when you find yourself in that situation that all you're doing is talking, uh, pull a question out and, and ask a question. Um, how do I find sellers? How do I do a lease option? How do I, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and that's kind of what I do on this call when I'm feeling like, okay, where do I go from here? Let's ask somebody a question. <laughs> so your turn, Kurt. Right. Um, talk 10%, listen 90%. Uh, that's a good one, though, Darlene, about <clears throat> having a list of questions. Uh, uh, so the questions I'd be asking, you start with, um, can you walk through the house describing each room? And then I would ask, well, in the uh, hall bathroom, what will, you, what will you do to improve it? What does it need? Does it need a toilet? Does it need to be painted? And so they, and then you ask, did you raise your family in this house? 
Well, what was it like um, when your oldest daughter was graduating high school? And you, and you get these stories, um, and you you reflect on, oh, that must have been really an important moment in your life uh, in this house. Is it going to be hard for you to leave this house? Um, and so you start asking these these uh, you care questions that actually are simple to ask. They're very short to ask and long to answer. You want to have long answers, uh, and then you go, "Oh yeah, I, I can I can re relate to that." Oh, what's the master bedroom like? So you just always kick it back into their into their court, uh, and then some of the scripting questions the script. Uh, will involve when they ask you pointed questions sellers will ask you very tough questions and so um, uh, part of it will be turning their question into you asking a question back um, uh, which is a, a difficult technique because often you just lock up and go oh my god uh, uh, click <laughs> you want to hang up uh, so part of uh, uh, taking the pressure off is breaking the call up into two, three, four, five calls. Um, so uh, what I find is uh, it's easiest to ask about, well, what is your mortgage payment? And what is, what, um, is the balance due on your mortgage in the second or third call? Uh, and, and certainly not in the first call. Certainly not in your um, lear early learning of talking to sellers. Uh, an expert might uh, be very good at um, confidence gaming and uh, uh, gauge a seller uh, seller's uh, willingness to share details uh, quickly uh, and ask early on. But for um, uh, your students, we want to give you a uh, first call, second call, third call topic list. Uh, so as not to rush things. Uh, and also, the uh, more times you call uh, consecutive nights or every two nights, uh, you will beg off on the first call saying, well, let me consult, consult with my team. You always have a team of who uh, you refer to to give a bigger presence than just yourself. Uh, that allows you to beg off and to call back with more information, and to continue on the script. <clears throat> uh, and that takes the pressure off you to break it up into 15-minute chunks. Uh, you hang up, you, you uh, stop hyperventilating, and uh, uh, then you get to uh, doing your comps estimates, uh, your comp investigations, and looking at instantstreetview.com, uh, looking at the uh, home on, uh, from, the, from the street. Google Earth, looking at it from satellite, uh, getting a, a feel for what, what the home um, might actually be worth and how you would sell it. So, um, so we'll be uh, talking about scripts and um, uh, seller psychology. Definitely. Back to you, Jolene. Okay, so the one of the questions um, I want to ask her is in some of the mail outs that you and your students have done, have you guys come across the free and clear owner? The person that oh, owns yeah. the house without any, uh, without a mortgage? Yeah, uh, that actually is more uh, common than you might think, um, especially. Uh, from the uh, lead source that I have a lifetime subscription to, uh, that they're vacant, and I can also select for a free and clear. Um, one of the prior students, um, I have a, uh, an ongoing mentorship uh, relationship with, we talked to um, uh, one of his yellow letter uh, sellers this morning, an elderly lady with a condo, and she owned it free and clear. Uh, one of the problems with free and clear owners is uh, if they're paying the electric bill, they're paying the condo association fee, two or three hundred bucks a month. Uh, some of them are well off enough, and they just don't care. 
uh, and a free and clear seller uh, has, uh, uh, you would like that deal because uh, that means you don't have this, this balance due on the mortgage as the uh, uh, hard limit. But uh, sometimes uh, they aren't that easy of a sell because uh, they are very financially secure. So we actually come across a lot of uh, free and clear sellers. And then the question, let's say that it was the same scenario. It's a vacant property. It, the estimate's 150. Now he doesn't have a balance. So we ask that person, uh, do you, what do you owe on the house? And they say, nothing. I, I own it free and clear. And I think instead of going down the path we went down, and sometimes that's a little um, unnerving to some investors because they're unsure of how to take it from there. Then one of the questions that I like to ask them is, is how much are you asking for the house? And then in that case, if you were to take that same scenario and you were a free and clear owner, Kurt, let's pick it up from there. You know, you said the estimate's 150. Kurt, how much are you asking for the house? Uh, well, you know, I don't um, have any uh, um, any lim any uh, reasons to pick one price or another, so I I'm just going to go with estimate. Uh, if I call a real estate agent, you know, that's what I'll tell her. So I want 150. Have you, have you talked to any real estate agents at all? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, your okay. postcard just gave me the idea to sell, actually. Yeah, and like you said, it's been vacant for two years. Time to let it go, right? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I thought I was going to be ambitious enough to rent it. I don't know. I like playing golf and this and that. And uh, yep. I'll just, just let it go. Well, kind of lucky for me then. <laughs> I, what, my, what I try to do, Kurt, is try, you know, from one investor to another, obviously having it as a rental property, you're an investor there. Um, and, 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 you know, your time with that, maybe the beginning, figure out something that would work for both of us. And, of course, you know, as you know, um, if I were to buy it as a rental property, uh, obviously being vacant for a couple of years, I'm going to have to put some money into it unless you want to. And, you know, it's going to have to work for me on, uh, you know, just from a money standpoint. If it's worth 150 as an investor, you know, it's going to need some work because it's been vacant. I mean, I haven't seen it yet. And based on what you said earlier, it doesn't sound like there's been a new roof or been a new uh, furnace or air conditioner or water heater. Or you know maybe maybe not even new flooring, new carpets, new uh, appliances. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to put a little bit into it. Um, also, I would love to be able to have an investment that you know has some equity into it. Um, I'm just right. So to figure out. part of what we uh, train as students is in the face-to-face -face is how to uh, use a rehab. Uh, uh, checklist sheet. Walk through the house and say, "Up, oh, it needs new carpet. Uh, it needs new paint. You know, that's 2,500 for flooring and and uh, 2,000 for paint." And blah blah blah. And you know, Mr. Seller, uh, you see this rehab. You, you would have to either put this money in to sell it to the agent, or you'd have to take this off anyway. So, uh, what if you took? Um, this $15,000 rehab off your $150,000 ask. Uh, would you be willing to do that? Because that's what you'd have to do anyway. And so now you're down to 135. Well, I, I see your point. I see your point. Uh, so that becomes a face-to-face -face when you're in the home as the investor walking through the home with this checklist we give you. Uh, uh, you now take off the rehab cost, and uh, there's also other things you can take off, and that's the uh, agent fee. So if you listed with an agent, you're now selling at 135. The agent gets uh, 6%, plus there's 3% uh, closing costs and 3% carrying costs. Uh, you'd lose that anyway, so uh, uh, it seems reasonable that uh, if you take that off. And I, if I gave you that, it'd be the same amount you'd get if you sold with an agent. So what if we took another 13% off? That's what it, you'd, you'd lose in an agent sale. 
and you show that math and uh, you punch it up on a calculator and have and better yet you give the calculator to the seller and they punch it up uh, darn now it's down to 123 and uh, so now you're you're negotiating off 123 not 100 Gotcha. So that's where it starts then. Then if I asked, what if I asked, um, Kurt, what would be the least you would pay, you would take? You still there? Yep. What, what's yep. the least you would take if I paid cash and close on the day of your choice? Oh, my God. Uh, I haven't really thought of it. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of shocked, actually, at down to 123. I was kind of hoping I'd uh, get 150 for it. So um, I guess I'd have to see a credible offer uh, that I, I would believe that you would actually get me. So when would you when would you want to close? When would you want to sell it? What day? Uh, well, I've been sitting on it for two years, so. Uh, I uh, haven't thought about, you know, I, if I, uh, I guess sold it immediately, uh, uh, that would be okay. Uh, but uh, I actually hadn't thought of it. So if we could close next week, that would be something you would like to do? Yep. Um, yeah, then it'd be a problem what to do with that cash. So uh, that's another problem. So, you know. Uh, this is all kind of a surprise. I just called you on your, my po on your postcard, and uh, I'm still trying to deal with uh, maybe only getting 123,000 for it. Okay. So, so what I would like to do is I would I would like to try to make it work on terms that are desirable for you. So, if we could close next week, I'd be more than happy to try to make that happen. Um, and if you were to do um, to get the number that you're looking for, would you be willing to work with terms? For example, get a little bit now and get a big part later. Well, you'd have to explain it to me. Uh, uh, I'm not that sophisticated, so uh, it makes me a little nervous. Uh, yeah, you'd have to uh, explain how that would be. Uh, benefit for me and what that would what that would all mean okay absolutely um i'll tell you what why don't we go ahead and meet at the house is that something we can do yep sure it's not too far from me okay and then we'll go through the same nine yards like we did earlier and then at that time face to face so now at this point you have somebody who owns a house free and clear i would rather finish that part of the negotiation face to face unless I've just got so many phone calls coming in and I want to negotiate hard. There are times that I negotiate hard, but in terms of training right now, I wouldn't go down that route for you guys. Um, so in, in, in doing a slow-moving, gaining trust, um, multiple-part negotiation, I want to get face-to-face. -face. I want to take my clipboard. I want to be an engineer accountant type. For those of you on the phone, you know what that means. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to methodically take down the entire process and I'm going to talk out loud and I'm going to draw out all those all those repairs and of course I'm going to if he doesn't know the numbers if I say wow I wonder how much this roof would cost have you had it priced at all do you know what it would cost out here and then I'm going to take some sheets out and go oh look it's this much on this size house so I'm really looking at about seven thousand five hundred dollars to put a new roof on this house, and he says, "No, I think it's more like five thousand. Okay, well, uh, let's call it five thousand. And then I'm gonna. So now I'm backing into it, and then I'm gonna say the same thing. If you, you know, if you, if, if I'm not the answer for you now, what are you gonna do with the house? Let's be realistic. And I'm gonna talk to him, you know, person to person, face to face about the house. And and I mean, I'm gonna might even say, oh, my eyes are burning. Do you mind if we step outside? I'm having a little bit of hard time in here." you know, implying that the house smells <laughs> in, in a situation where he is an investor and the house has been vacant for two years, you know, we both smell it. We both walk in there. We both know it. 
if it's a house he's living in, I'm not going to be that obnoxious. But um, it's all about I'm going to I'm going to build the amount of money. By the time I'm done, it's going to cost me three times the rehab cost when I tell him how much my rehab is going to cost. So and you know if as Kurt said, well I don't know maybe I'll maybe I'll talk to a realtor and maybe I'll try to sell it. Uh, then I'm going to draw it out for him. That you know there's a and I'll draw it out in the long version. There's 10% cost to sell. Your realtor's going to want to do this. They're going to want to get a commission. There's typically a second agent on the deal. Your buyer's going to want you to contribute to their closing costs. Then they have an inspection. And in the house like this, you know, there's not going to be an FHA lender or a VA lender that will loan on this house in this present condition. So now you're going to have to dump some of your own money into it before you get to the closing table. I'm no, I'm a no-headache closing buyer for you. I will close next week if you want to. So I'm going to go all the way around that corner to come back to that point and try to get him to work on the same terms that would work for both of us. In a free and clear situation, um, I will. Uh, one of the one of the techniques we like to use are multiple offers. I will definitely make him a low-ball cash offer to close next week. And then I will definitely ask him for a price after we've gone through that house and we talked about all the repairs and the cost to sell and the and the cost to put it in market condition. I'm going to subtract all that off of the number so that he gives his price. And I'm going to say, come on, John, be realistic. If you're going to put it on the market today, you're going to have to do this, that, and the other. So give me a realistic price that you want. And and so if he doesn't want my lowball offer to close next week. One of my other offers is his price, my terms. That's fine. I'll give you $123,000 for the house, but the most I can pay you is $400 a month. Would that work for you? I didn't mention interest. I didn't mention down payment. Those are my aces in my, in, in, in my pocket. I'm going to come back out, so I'm going to make him ask for those. And so, again, there's my negotiations on and on and on. And, and, and the more we talk as investors together, the more you know how to come up with creative ways. And it just comes out sometimes. I don't even know what I'm going to say. <laughs> but I do know my bottom line. I know that I need to make either 300 or more a month in rental, or I know I need to make at least 10 to 20% in return if I'm buying a flip. So that's kind of what's in the back of my mind when I do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the elderly uh, seller is... Uh, uh, some are uh, open to annuitizing their equity, and they are very familiar with the term uh, annuitizing uh, 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 something they own, turning into a stream of income, uh, at uh, and saving them capital gain uh, taxes. Uh, it still is a hard sell uh, because uh, the uh, seller is uh, risk adverse and half lenders. They'd rather just be done with it, even if they're going to pay triple the capital gains taxes um, and they don't have a real purpose for all that cash today. Uh, they're still worried about just the hassle and the thing going sour. So uh, you've got to really present a good, solid, credible deal that they uh, trust you. Otherwise, they're just going to say, nah, I just want a cash deal. And uh, it's going to be impossible to move them off. Just like the lady this morning. Uh, uh, she had been carrying this condo with at least 500, 600. She owned it three and quarter, but there was still about 600 bucks a month uh, carrying costs. And she didn't care. She was going to hold it till she died. She didn't, uh, there was nothing that we could convince her uh, that the seller financing was her best interest. Uh, so, it's a drip situation. You just keep on dripping. Call every month. Call every two months. See what her status is. And uh, uh, eighty percent of your deals are going to come from drip, not the uh, first or second or third calls. It's going to be six months down the road, nine months down the road, uh, after their life uh, situations change, they will become motivated sellers. They first call you. 80% of the first calls are curiosity tire kickers. It's not a waste of your time. You 
got to put them in your spreadsheet or in, in some uh, tracking system. And here's where this becomes a business. You've got to be trained. You've got to be um, disciplined to make those strip calls. Uh, and, and that actually uh, is more difficult. Uh, when you'd rather be watching TV or wa rather be putting the kids in bed, uh, uh, between 7 and 8.30 is the prime time for trip calls. And that's uh, going to be tough for you to not watch TV and, and put your time into real estate. Uh, I'm just telling you the truth. Yep. It takes discipline for sure. Um, I want to go ahead and just say for those of you that are joining us for the class, the first um, kickoff call is next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. That's August 18th at 7 p.m. Um, and then I have on the day after my Wednesday class, I teach the Wednesday class third Wednesday of the month at the headquarters. And we'll probably spend time at the Wednesday class dealing with um, marketing and saturating your market and just some techniques on marketing. So that's so the first call for this class is the 18th. My class at Georgia Rea is the 19th. And then um, the following week for the Yellow Letter campaign, we meet face-to-face -face at the headquarters. And that's on Tuesday, August 25th at 7 p.m. And then we'll just build from there. Um, I'm excited. I look forward to seeing you guys. It'll be a very, very close, you know, um, practical application type of training for you. And uh, I just want to thank you very much. I think we're at the end of our call here. Uh, I don't know if we open up at this time, Kurt. Um, yeah, yeah. Kurt. Let's, let's give a short open up. But yeah, we've uh, really run over. Uh, yeah, we've completely explained. But the. And uh, as soon as you sign up, uh, I will. Uh, contact you and get you your uh, addresses and uh, templates for how to write the letters and I will walk you through that so we get so you get the letters into the mail as soon as possible so you start getting the callbacks. Sounds good. Any questions? This is Ron again. Um, do you use or recommend the use of a uh, answering service to screen the calls, um, following us, having them follow a script? I know that I believe at one of the uh, RIA meetings there, there was a local company that offered a phone answering service to real estate investors, and they would follow your prescribed script and then uh, immediately email you or text you the the uh, contact information, and you could uh, pick it up from there, kind of as, uh, as a way to have somebody always answer the phone. The the premise being that if they don't, if someone doesn't answer the phone, they probably won't leave a message, and they probably won't call back. What's your thoughts on that? Um, I use a uh, voicemail uh, system myself, and I run 100% of the calls through voicemail. Uh, but I do that for a reason. Um, uh, for uh, you guys, this small number of calls per day, per week, uh, unless you've got a day job, uh, or if you do have a day job, you just uh, put your cell phone on, uh, you know, uh, and have them all go to voicemail if you can't answer them directly. I think you should uh, get a, a Google Voice phone number so that your real phone number is masked, and what you put on your letters is the Google Voice phone number. Uh, it'll end up calling through to you anyway, uh, but they won't get the real phone number and uh, not use a uh, – because that's money. Uh, in, unless you're uh, mailing thousands of letters, um, I don't see a need for uh, an answering service because it's actually pretty expensive. Uh, I do something cheap. Uh, I have a nice uh, – I can send my phone number out with my, uh, my uh, voice, uh, with my message, and I get – 90% um, messages left and only 10% or less hang-ups. And uh, quite honestly, I like the hang-ups because it helps sort out the tire kickers. I don't want to talk to any tire kickers. So the opposite end of that spectrum, <laughs> like Kurt said, if you're really just getting started into this, this part of the business and 
all you're going to do is take the 250 leads and you're going to put it out there. Unless you absolutely cannot get on your phone during, you know, daylight hours, um, you're not going to have a whole lot of calls. I mean, you may get 10 to 20 calls, as, as Kurt said. He's had as much as a 10% return on his handwritten letters. Um, if you, you know, there's two schools of thought about the voicemail. I, I like Kurt's attitude. He only wants to talk to qualified sellers, and there's nothing wrong with that. So in my case, I'm bringing up to everybody that has a house to sell. So it, it, it is said that the person that gets the deal is the person that gets to the seller first and knows what they're doing, of course. So a lot of people believe that if you don't answer the phone, you're never going to get another chance to talk to them. Um, this One of the services, Ron, when I do some niche marketing such as pre-foreclosures, I do use a service like Pat Live. I do write the script for them to follow, and I'll share that with you guys in the class. Um, and it's a lot of the script. You know, there's, there's only one reason why I could go through my script pretty well, and that's because I use it and, and tweak it all the time. Um, but I, I am a firm believer that a human answering the phone is going to give you the best um, chance of grabbing that lead. Um, and, and those are qualified and unqualified leads. So, yes, but if you're just getting started, you have to count yeah, the cost. That human needs to be you, the investor, not Pat Live. And, and again, I, you know, I, that's the nice thing about us is we can have a difference of opinion and both be, be right. Um, Pat Live, when I set that up, they do my they do my initial first few call uh, questions. If they answer the question, are you willing to sell the house for what you owe on it? Pat Live is instructed to get me on the phone. And so one of the options is to push the call through. The other option is I get the I get all the information from the script in my email, and I can either email the person back or phone call the person back. So uh, yes, when it comes to running your business, you need to be attached to your money. So nobody else can do that part as good as you can business out of um, getting your phone to ring, then you do need a team in place. Well, that was good information. I really appreciate it. I've already uh, started uh, the mailing, and uh, I did subscribe to Pat Live, but I was having second thoughts about it listening to this call tonight. I think I'll uh, – what I'd like to do, is, and I'm – I'm traveling this week. Is there any way I could, uh, by email, maybe get uh, take a look at the scripts so that I make sure I've got Pat Live doing it the way that you would do it? <laughs> Ron, are you um, are you already signed up for the class? No, I just I just uh, was driving and I got the text or the email from uh, the RIA saying this call uh, was starting. So I just jumped on the call and. It happens to be exactly what I'm looking for, help in a uh, marketing <laughs> campaign. So yeah. I'm all excited about it, so that I haven't done anything other than to listen tonight. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of reserved for those signing up for the class. Um, I'm more than willing to spend some time talking to you about it. You could send me an email at darbyshouses at gmail.com. Um, but but D-A-R, Dar Buys Houses at gmail.com. Okay, I'll email um, you Yep, yeah, one of the things about Pat Live, my only hesitation, I see my list, Ron, so I always call in and I get five or six people to call at the same time, and it works really well. The only thing is, you know, Pat Live charges you for time, and they're really, really good at reiterating the same point over and over again, so the, the clock ticks and your, and your bill goes up. But other than that, they have been fantastic on my pre foreclosure campaign. I wouldn't have done it without them. All right. I look forward to getting in this class if possible and I'll be emailing. All right. Will you guys have a good evening? And hope to see you guys around Georgia Rio. Thank you. Night all. <laughs>